We've now come to that part in everybody's Marvel movie marathon where they just gotta grit their teeth and just sit through it because way better films are on the horizon. Either that or go up and use the bathroom and get more snacks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember when we sat through the second one of these. First off, you like left for a good like solid chunk. Like you were like, I'm not sitting here with you idiots. I'm going home and sleeping in my I'm own bed. I'm tired. Room. I was tired. I'm going to my own comfortable bed. <laughs> uh, I managed to stay with it throughout the entire film, but this was the moment where I got up and left the theater and went to go and get like actual food, like not popcorn and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to go and get actual meals because I was like. Yeah, I can skip this one. I'm pretty good because <laughs> we were, of course, talking about Thor 2 The Dark World, which most people universally agree is the worst Marvel film, although I do know someone who it's actually his personal favorite. Um, and he's a cool guy, and, you know, hey, he's allowed to think whatever he wants about this, but facts are most people tend to think this is the worst. So I did enjoy it, but it's definitely not one of my favorites. It's, that's the thing. I have said many times, including throughout every single one of these episodes that we've done, I do not think that Marvel has made a bad movie, but that doesn't mean all their movies are good. And yeah, I can't say this is a good movie, but I'm still not like, eh, it's bad. I'm just like, eh, I'll, I'll sit through it. <laughs> it's fine. Although I will say... Oddly enough, now that we have sat through all these films again mm -hmm. for like the third time or whatever we've done this, as I mentioned when we watched the first Thor film, that movie has not aged well, and a lot of it has to do with just the way that it's shot. It is shot incredibly like just a TV show. Yeah. This one is at least shot like a movie. Yeah. So in a weird way, at least aesthetically speaking... This one is a better film than the first Thor film. Yeah, at this point. I think that's why I like it. The aesthetics, that, and the um, and the uh, connection, the interaction between Thor and Loki. I thought they had like great chemistry. Together. I didn't say, man. That's the thing. There were news stories coming out that Joss Whedon had to come in and rewrite a chunk of this film, and everyone can tell when he came in because <laughs> when they're actually having the jailbreak scene, when they're having to get Loki out of there. All the interactions between Thor and Loki get so much better than any interaction any character has with anyone in this film. It's like, uh, one of these moments is not like the others. <laughs> uh, and it's weird watching this again because I remember when I was watching this in the theater the first time, I was like, oh, this isn't very good. But when it got to the prison break scene, everything got better. And throughout the rest of the film, I enjoyed it way more. Yeah. But this time watching, you know, first time watching it, first part of the film was here. Then the last act with like the jailbreak and Loki, it was like about here. This time watching it, it's a little bit closer to like there. A more even It's now. a little bit more even because I didn't think the first two acts were as bad. Partly, I think a lot of that has to do with like your expectations when you go into this stuff. Um, because as we mentioned with Iron Man 2, I remember not really liking Iron Man 2 all that much. And this time I was like, you know what? It's still got all those problems, but I enjoyed it more this time than the last time that I watched it. And because I went into it with such low expectations this time, I think. I went into this with low expectations. And it's like, yeah, it's, you know, the first two acts aren't as bad as I remember. Like, I remember having big problems with the pacing when I watched the first time. This time, the pacing's not that bad. But one thing that I noticed this time around, now that we have had Thor Ragnarok, Thor was so boring in his own movies before Thor Ragnarok. Like, I remember watching Thor Ragnarok and thinking, yeah, this seems about accurate to the Thor that we've had. I mean, he's more jokey. His, like, goofiness is more exaggerated. His jockishness is more exaggerated. But, you know, I can still buy it with the Thor we've seen in the previous films. And then going back and watching this film specifically, I'm like, no! <laughs> Really, all of the Thor that we saw on Thor Ragnarok came from the Avengers films and from uh, the first Thor film. But it's even still only like bits of the first two uh, Avenger films. In fact, even more like Age of Ultron than the first one. Uh, and a lot of it comes from his braggadocious nature in the first film. But you watch this film, man, they tried to make Thor so serious and so Shakespearean. And I was like, that ain't working, man. Uh, maybe it's just that Chris Hemsworth can't really pull that off with this accent that he's trying to do. Because I've seen uh, Chris Hemsworth in more serious movies. And he's great in them. He is a very underrated actor. But with this weird accent and nature that he's trying to give Thor, 
it's like, yeah, man, you can't be really serious. Or maybe it's just the way that shot. But man, he can do the jokey jock Thor that he does in Ragnarok so well. And watching this and thinking back to Thor Ragnarok, I was like, wow, I don't care about Thor in this. <laughs> he is so bland. He is so flat in everything. And they try to make Thor seem like so serious by constantly giving him that like traveler's robe around him at all mm -hmm. times. Like anytime he had that robe on, it was like, this is time for serious Thor. Like this is to let the audience know it's time for me to be very serious. It's like no goofy capes or helmets or anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, dude, he Thor Ragnarok was about the death of all the gods and a very strong message about colonialism. It's got a lot going for it, and they still made it really jokey and goofy. This movie is about dark elves coming back. That's pretty much it. <laughs> and yeah, man, Thor is flat. Everyone is flat in this. I, uh, Unfortunately, yeah, but like I said, the uh, interaction between Loki and him... That's what saves it. Exactly. Yes, that is what saves it. Um... Like, I remember, um, at this point, it's already up on YouTube, but I'm doing reviews of every single one of the Marvel films, like, quick rapid-fire reviews, I give them all a score at the end. I gave this, like, a six. Uh, I'd still probably stand by that, because I think that once they break Loki out of jail, like, the interactions between them, all the little stuff that they do with Loki in here, and also the big battle scene at the end, which I still think is actually pretty darn good, uh... I'd say that's around a 7. Everything else in this film is a 5, because it's not really bad. It's just, you know, plain oatmeal. What is it, Peach? Peach likes this movie. Peach had thoughts on this film that she wanted to share. <laughs> yes. Mm. Good. Agreed. This film is very... <laughs> this film is very... Hmm. Uh, <laughs> boop. All right. So, uh, before we were so rudely interrupted, uh, let's see... Uh, so yeah, this film is really just kind of like bland oatmeal aside from like the good bits. But there are moments in here that I really don't like as well. Yeah. And a lot of that has to do with the humans in this film. Yeah, unfortunately. It's like, once again, Jane feels like really shoved in and unnecessary. And what stings is I really like the character of Jane Foster in the comics and she's really nothing like she is in this. Uh, she's not a scientist, she's a doctor, which I guess is a form of science if you want to like get really yeah, technical I guess with so. it. But yeah, so it's like, okay, they both still have the word doctor in the front of their name. Um, but yeah, man, the character of Jane Foster in here is really just kind of here to be like, I'm going to explain sciencey stuff <laughs> because Natalie Portman doesn't really want to be in these movies still. Like, mm -hmm. this is so beneath her <laughs> to be like Thor's love interest. Uh, whoa. Getting a little frisky. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is so beneath her, the role that she is given in this film. But in the first film, I remember a lot of people complain about, oh, it had to go to Earth. And I already explained in that uh, review that we did why I actually kind of like that he had to go to Earth for this. And I didn't mind the humans in there at all. Uh, Nellie Portman, again, she had that look on her face like, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. But Selvig and Darcy... I actually kind of dug them. I like them too. I like them in the first film. In this one, I can't fucking stand them. I really cannot. Like, it's it's like they took them and made them like into like one note exaggerated characters. Selvig in the first film was there to be the older guy who knows stuff about S.H.I.E.L.D. and to kind of be like partly guiding uh, Jane. And it's like, okay, Jane, I know you're wanting to do all this stuff, but you can't trust that guy because of this. Oh, I was wrong about this. Well, here's the deal with these show guys. Be careful that. It's like, he was there to be like the older wise guy. It's like, okay, that's fine. And Darcy was there just for comedic relief, but they didn't use Darcy that much. Like, you might think in your mind, and I remember thinking this when I saw Thor 2. I was like, yeah, she's used in Thor 2 about as much as she was in Thor 1. Going back and watching this again, she is hardly used in Thor 1. Yeah. At all. Like, she is only there for a few jokes, and honestly, I think they kind of worked what they yeah. used her for. But I don't know if it's just like people went, oh, people like the jokes in Marvel films amp up the jokey character here, or if it's the fact that ever since the first Thor film, that actress, whose name I'm completely blanking on, she got like a hit show on CBS, Two Broke Girls. Mm -hmm. So they're like, well, she's a much bigger star now, so we need to give her more to do. Cause she has so much to do in this movie. And wow, it just, it didn't work. <laughs> Cause her jokes are not nearly as good. Like she has one joke in here that I really like. And like still to this day, even after watching this movie a few times, I still laugh at it. It's the, how's space? Space is fine. It's like, I like that. I actually kind of like that joke. Every other joke that she does, like, oh my God. 
Oh, this this feels like a punch up artist came in here and was just like, not enough jokes in here. What's your one joke you care? I'm gonna put more of her in here and here and here and here and here. Like the whole thing of she has an intern's intern. I was like, that's like a one note joke. Like that's a, hey, I wanna get an intern, but you're the intern. Well, intern's gonna have interns. <laughs> no, it's like that should have been the entire intern's intern thing. Instead, she already hired an intern and he's there throughout the entire thing just so that they can keep making the joke over and over again. He's my intern's intern. He's my intern, but aren't you an intern? Like, oh, like, oh my God, that's not even really a joke. Like, that's a passing line that makes you go, eh, 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 at best. And man, he kept coming back. And that character has nothing to him at all. Nope. He is non-existent in this movie, even though they keep making him exist in this movie. Uh, but Selvig? I hated what they did with Selvig again. Yeah, the poor guy. Like, seriously, he did not deserve that treatment. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, and also, it's the worst jokes they give him. Like, it opens up with him running butt naked around. It's like, what the? Who thought this was a good idea for this character? Like, how come Hawkeye didn't r st run around naked after, like, his mind... I was about came, to say! It's like, like, after his mind got fried, it's like, he came back... Hawkeye snapped. seems totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> then he also take over, like, 20 different S.H.I.E.L.D. agents or something as well. It's like, they're all fine as well. It's like, but no, we need to make him jokey. We need to get more humor here, because people like the humor with the humans. It's like, ah, they kind of did. Yeah. And the humor in the first film was not this humor. This is not the same humor as that like this is just really dumb the jokes in here up until like i said the moment in which thor actually starts like making some jokes with loki there uh like the <laughs> interactions <laughs> between them when they're trying to escape is great mm -hmm. uh like i saw there's a post on tumblr that went around for years just basically going how can anyone believe they're not brothers and it's just that clip of him going you need to press it i am pressing it Gently. <laughs> I am pressing it gently. I was like, yeah, they're brothers. Absolutely. <laughs> or when they're like escaping out of there, I think you left one pillar untouched. Shut up, Loki. <laughs> like, yeah, this is great. I love this interaction between these guys. Uh, and as I mentioned, speaking of things I like, I really still dig to this day the final fight scene between them. I hate it kept coming back and forth to like what Darcy and all of them were doing, but this idea that they're fine while they're teleporting across the nine realms. Yeah, that's like, pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And like Thor's hammer is constantly trying to find him as it's zipping around, and it just comes back in for one big final smash after like getting all that momentum building up. It's like, that's actually a really damn cool idea of how to end this fight. That's all I really got in this film. <laughs> Aesthetically, also, it is way better. Like, Asgard does look good. Yeah, it's like, I always really liked how the they portrayed Asgard in this movie. It's like, a, a good combination of, like, like Norse uh, uh, architecture, of ancient Orth Norse myth architecture. Architecture. Uh, architecture. <laughs> that well, I and sci-fi space, but... <laughs> yeah. I'm playing advanced through the, technology. I'm playing through the new... Go yeah, the, 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 I'm playing through the new God of War right now, and, yeah, there's, like, one moment in which you go to Jotunheim... And you see, like, this big shining tower out in the distance. I was like, that really looks exactly like out of Thor uh, Asgard. I'm oh, sorry. That really looks like out of uh, Thor the Dark World when they're, like, showing the big temple in Asgard. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, it's kind of interesting that they were able to both kind of come to the same decision on what super fantasy sci-fi Asgard would look like. It's like, oh, okay, that's pretty <laughs> cool. Um, but, yeah, so, honestly, I don't really have a lot more to say about this because, to me, this film is just a big bag of nothing except for the little good parts in here. Yeah. But then there are also some little bad parts in here. Mm -hmm. So this to me is the most like it evens out. But I would still give it more good points than bad. Yeah. Because those interactions with Loki are so good. And, you know, I've often said the end of a movie can really save a film. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I still feel kind of positive about that Godzilla film. The fight scene at the end of that is really damn cool. Fight scene at the end of this one is still pretty damn cool. I still enjoy that one. Even if, you know, the villain is... Probably the weakest. Mm -hmm. uh, although, that's a weird thing, man. I remember when he, this movie came out, everybody said, man, this is the worst villain. He is the flattest villain. But I'm going back and watching this now after watching Justice League, and I'm just <laughs> like, holy shit, Steppenwolf was even... This guy has got some stuff going for him. He's kind of got, like, I want to reclaim my Earth. He's kind of got some friends and buddies there, and he actually kind of cares about them a little bit. He's kind of got something going for him. Man, I've now seen worse than this, <laughs> so it kind of makes me not feel as bad about this. I guess so, but as far as I just marvel villains. Yeah, he's still probably the worst. Yeah. Uh, God, there was one other that was really, like... Ronan is really flat because we know pretty much nothing about him, but at least he's got some personality to him? Or at least he's got a little bit of, like, aura going to him. Yeah. Like, he feels kind of like a threat. 
But this guy, like, his costume just wasn't as good. And it kind of takes me off that he is nothing like Malekith in the comics. Because Malekith in the comics, he is, like, a trickster. But I get, you can't really... You just had Loki. Yeah. You can't really do that again. It's like, all right, fine. Um... But yeah, it's as far as Marvel villains go, I'm trying to think if there was a worse one. Yellow Jacket is a is isn't very good in Ant Man either, but again, he's got a cool look to him. And he also has kind of like this man child mentality going mm -hmm. to him, which kinda makes him at least something of a good uh foil to Scott Lang. Yeah, it's like he's just like Malika is just a very dark generic dark elf. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he is. Uh man, and it really ticks me off that they got uh, Christopher Eccleston, I think that's his name, mm -hmm. Doctor Number Nine, uh, Doctor Who Number Nine. They got him to be this guy, and I've always liked that actor, especially on Doctor Who, which is odd because a lot of times in which like Darcy and the intern intern were running away from the Dark Elves, I was like, this feels like an episode of Doctor Who. Like the costumes for the Dark Elves look like Doctor Who costumes, and this idea of like we're in London and we're just got we have a girl with a funny hat on and she's running around away from these things while the hero character has to stop him, but the girl is doing some really smart, nice things too. They're figuring out ways with their brain to stop these ones. Like this is really a Doctor Who episode at the end with a budget. Uh, so maybe that's another reason why I kind of enjoy parts <laughs> of this. Um, but yeah, I still think that this is probably the worst Marvel film. Although, man, it's so weird. I used to put like this, Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, no wait, this, Iron Man 2, Incredible Hulk, and uh, the first Thor. And now that we've watched all of those again, I'm kind of like this, the first Thor, Incredible Hulk, those two are kind of neck and neck. And then Iron Man 2. It's weird that Iron Man 2, which is one of the worst ones, kind of got better on the second or third viewing. And this one, this one remained the same, but so many other ones kind of like dropped down. But all right, I'm rambling at this point, which means it's time to wrap up. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we still have about, what, four more of these to do? Yeah, something like that. So yeah, come back for the rest of these and join us this weekend for uh, Avengers Infinity War. You know what's coming this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> all right, thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.